Hi everyone, my name is Pavitra V, Department of Chemistry. Today we are going to discuss a topic called Fluorescence, Phosphorescence and Jablonski Diagram. It is actually a topic included in a photochemistry comes under photophysical process. In this photochemistry, we also discuss about chemiluminescence and bioluminescence topics. First, we will start with the fluorescence. Generation of luminescence through excitation of a molecule by ultraviolet or visible light photons is a phenomenon termed as photoluminescence which is divided into two categories. One is fluorescence and another one is phosphorescence. Fluorescence is the property of some atoms and molecules to absorb light at a particular wavelength and to subsequently emit light of longer wavelength. Fluorescence is a short-lived type of luminescence. That is, when an electron present in the ground state, when an incident light with an energy E is equal to H mu is subjected to that electron, that electron absorbs the energy from the incident radiation and get excited to the higher energy state. But in higher energy state, it is highly unstable, so it comes back to the original ground state by emitting the absorbed radiation. The time period taken by fluorescence is less when compared to phosphorescence. The reason for that will be discussed in further slides. It is a molecular phenomena in which a substance radiates light energy almost instantaneously upon being struck with light from another source. Some energy from the incident light is absorbed by the substance. The meaning is that the radiated light is typically of lower energy and thus longer wavelength. As we know energy is inversely proportional to the wavelength than that of the source. So the lower energy than that of the source. So this is the fluorescence explanation in a diagram. So molecules absorb photons and are excited to the higher electronic state like S1 and S2. The absorbed energy can be released by emission of a photon of light. A molecule stays in the excited state for up to 1 to 10 nanoseconds. See 1 to 10 nanosecond it is the least time before emission. So this is called a Jablonski diagram. S0 is the ground state. Here purple arrow mark indicates the electron flow by the absorption of incident radiation and this is the excited state. Here the energy is lost without the radiation or it can also be called as relaxation and from S1 it is come back to the S0 ground state by the emission of radiation. So in the excited state the, uh, the molecule or the excited electron stay up to 1 to 10 nanoseconds. So this is the fluorescence process. Next we come to the phosphorescence. It is nothing but delayed and long lived emission of light energy in the form of a photon after an electron has been excited due to radiation. So it is also called delayed fluorescence. The type of photoluminescence it is a spin forbidden process so it is for, for spin forbidden forbidden is nothing but not allowed you can see it in the image singlet ground state singlet means the electrons having the opposite spin this is the singlet excited state one electron is excited to the higher energy state and one electron is in the ground state and this is the triplet excited state in which the spin is changed in the higher energy state. So the electrons having a same spin are uh, present so it is called triplet excited state. So you can see it in another diagram singlet ground state the electron is excited the singlet excited state when it is uh, lower come to the lower energy that is triplet state. After the triplet state it is coming back to the original ground state by emitting the radiation. So this is called phosphorescence. Next we will move to the Jablonski diagram. It is actually a beautiful image 
which explains both fluorescence and phosphorescence in detail. So this S0 is actually a ground state and this S1 and S2 are the excited singlet states. See, excited singlet energy states. Each energy state consists of several vibrational energy states. We know that in an energy level diagram, each excited energy state consists of a several vibrational energy states. Each vibrational energy state consists of several rotational energy states. So, when we supply energy to an electron or to an molecule, first it undergo rotation that is rotational excitation and afterwards it undergo vibration that is vibrational energy state excitation. After that it undergo electronic excitation, electronic excitation. So, here in Jablonski diagram we have considered fluorescence and phosphorescence together. So, in the green color arrow mark, it uh, explains the excitation, the absorbing energy of incident radiation. It is staying up to 10 power minus 15 seconds. Next one, the yellow arrow mark is nothing but it is internal conversion of vibrational relaxation. The excited molecule is just relaxed to the lower excited energy state but not the ground state. See this yellow mark indicates the internal conversion and the red arrow mark indicates the fluorescence process. That is the electrons is uh, jumping from higher energy level to lower energy level or it is coming back to the ground state by emitting the absorbed radiation. So this is the fluorescence. When we come to the phosphorescence, you can see a blue color lines that is nothing but internal system crossing or inter-system crossing that is from a singlet excited state it is come triplet state that is T1. This is the delayed fluorescence. Phosphorescence is also called delayed fluorescence and uh, this blue color line indicates inter-system crossing. Next one is the quenching. Quenching is nothing but non-radiative relaxations and uh, also quenching is nothing but lo losing the absorbed energy in the form of heat. So, if this sky blue color arrow mark and the purple aloe arrow mark indicates quenching and non-radiative relaxation. There will be no emission of any radiation due to these two process. Other than that, the heat is evolved during this process. So, both in fluorescence and phosphorescence, there will be non-radiative relaxations. This final arrow mark, red arrow mark, gives you the phosphorescence which takes 10 power minus 3 to 10 power 2 seconds. It is nothing but delayed fluorescence. The same Jablonski diagram can also be explained like this. So, this A is the photon absorption and it is get excited and F is this fluorescence. I is inter, inter, internal conversion and this ISC is inter-system crossing and uh, this IC is also an internal conversion in phosphorescence. Here also there will be internal conversion. T1, T2 are the triplet states. This P is the phosphorescence. So this is the Jablonski diagram explanation. Next we will move to the chemiluminescence. Chemiluminescence is nothing but production of light energy from a chemical reaction in excess of the black body radiation expected from that body. That is, black body is one which absorbs all the radiation incident on it. We know that a good absorber is also a good emitter. So, here what is happening means the light emitted by a chemical reaction is also called cold light. Normally, chemiluminescence involves the production of an electronically excited species from a number of reactants which goes on to release visible light in order to revert to its ground state energy. So, what's happening here means 
the electron present in the reactants they absorb a different wavelength of energy and get excited to the higher energy state but when it comes back to the ground state it is emitting a radiation which includes the wavelength of visible region hence that the emitted radiation is sensed by our eyes so we are observing the color that is emitted after excitation that is called chemiluminescence and this is the principle of chemiluminescence it occurs when there is a emission of light when an electron returns from an excited or higher energy level to the lower energy level this excitation excitation event is caused by the chemical reaction you can see it in the image the electron is excited from the ground state to the excited state after that it is highly unstable in the excited state so it coming back to the ground state by emitting the light or the visible wavelength region or the visible region wavelength mode next we will move to the bioluminescence so bioluminescence is the production and emission of light from a living organism inside a living system it is happening the term bioluminescence originated from the greek the word bios means living and the latin lumen meaning is light though so the living organism is emitting a light the emission of light is produced by chemical reactions within the organism these reactions can occur internal and external to the cell in order to attract the opposite sexual uh, in the worms or in some flies there will be a usage of this bioluminescence also they want to scare the predators using this bioluminescence it is not this as same as the fluorescence as it is the direct production of light where fluorescence is nothing but light absorbed and reemitted this is the difference between fluorescence and bioluminescence next we will discuss the determination of absorbed intensity a photochemical reaction occurs by the absorption of photons of light by the molecules therefore it is essential to determine the absorbed intensity of light for the study of rate of reaction so how much amount or the quantity of photons utilized to complete a reaction is to be determined by using some of the method this is the schematic diagram of a spectrophotometer used for the measurement of light intensity so we are using a light source and this is the lens we are calling it as a collimator it is a monochromator that is a prism which is producing all types of visible region that is a spectrum all col seven colors radiations are produced but we are utilizing only one wavelength hence we are using a slit or a wavelength selector only one type of wavelength is incident on the sample solution taken in a cuvette it is a cuvette that is the jar used to put our samples inside so this uh, emergent radiation is undergoing a detector called a photocell which detects the signals and this is the digital display or a meter which uh, displays the values of the incident radiation and this is the graph which shows a sample uv visible spectrum this is the apparatal setup other than that this is the explanation for that here first reading gives the incident intensity that is without introducing a sample only a cuvette reading that is i not and the second gives the transmitted intensity that is i with the sample when we difference both we will get the absorbed intensity this is the method other than that the detector we are uh, when we talk about the detectors detectors are generally used for the measurement of intensity of transmitted light in that detector we have three types thermopile photoelectric cell and a chemical actinometer so this chemical actinometer is nothing but uranyl and oxalic acid are mixed hence we also called it as uranyl oxalate actinometer